Hey, Scott, how are you doing? Fantastic, Rowell. How about yourself? Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Uh, so there's a particular question that uh, actually I've been, it's been on my mind. I keep forgetting to ask you, mm -hmm. but it's the question on mixed use self storage facilities. So let me set you up a little bit on this. Mm -hmm. I, a few weeks ago, I think I remember telling you that I had was riding um, my, my uh, mountain bike around an area where I'm doing just a residential fix and flip. Mm -hmm. And I found like a whole outdoor strip mall plaza that was empty. I was on a Sunday and then a, a pickup truck drove up to one of the units. I happened to knock on it, asked if they knew who the owner was or were you the owner? And he was the owner. Mm. So when talking to him about that, mm -hmm. uh, I was asking if he's looking to sell. It was off market. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a, a, a an agent who was trying to to um, solicit him to to list it, and uh, I said, "Well, maybe I'll put you an offer. I'll, I'll check with some people uh, I know mm -hmm. who do conversions, development, etc." Mm -hmm. And he said, "What did you have in mind?" And I said, "Well, the top of mind is self storage." And mm -hmm. he said, "Oh no, that they're not going to. The municipality or whatever is not going to approve mm -hmm. that." Mm -hmm. I go, "Have you tried?" And he said, "Well, if they would approved it, they would have. I would have sold it like." long time ago. Mm -hmm. But then also I, what came to mind is a possibility of a, a mixed use facility. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I've been meaning to pick your brain about that. Have mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. much have you had experience with mixed use? Do you think it might be a little bit more palatable to mm -hmm. the local, uh, the city or county mm -hmm. um, to allow that where, because you know, th there's a lot of retail um, buildings on main strips on very busy mm -hmm. thoroughways mm -hmm. that are going dark. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. can you shed some light on that? Uh, is it yeah. easier? Is it harder? Yeah, I, um, well, of course, you know, most of our answers are, uh, it, it depends, depends. And, uh, <laughs> obviously. So, you know, we could talk for a long time about this for a while. And um, I, I mean, you, you're familiar with our conversion projects and, uh, you know, I, and I know this is a, a question for one of our folks that have called in, you know, we've got, um, we have projects right now that are mixed use. And so we have purchased, you know, standalone, like a big box that is part of a retail center that we were able to carve out or it was already on its uh, separate parcel and it wasn't uh, attached to or connected to the ownership of the retail strip center. There's others that we have bought within a strip center where it's more of a standalone building, but it has a shared parking lot and you know the parcel lines go down the middle of the parking lot. And then we also have some that are just flat out connected to a retail strip so there's a you know there's a big box on the end and then you know the individual smaller stores that wrap around with a you know all shared parking in which we own the whole thing so answer to your question is does mixed use work and i'll answer this in multiple ways does mixed use work and the answer is um yes it, it does and you know a lot of the big guys meaning you know the reits uh, the public storages of the world u-haul extra space you know they're getting into the space a little more u-haul and and public more so than some of the others um, but they're doing an exceptional job at it. And, and a lot of that is driven by the fact that uh, we can't find good infill locations, meaning, you know, when a city's all, all you know, areas all built out and it's populated, um, the, the city, the, you know, the municipality isn't always amenable to bringing in self-storage because it d doesn't generate a lot of tax revenue. Now, to your point, and in your story here from what this um, owner has stated and and also the question that that the person that um, emailed in has asked is you know is it very difficult to, to do uh, well it does depend because we're in a situation right now and uh, you know with the pandemic where you know retail has taken another hit i mean it's been taking a hit and slowly dying over the years but then you know the pandemic last year just shuttered a lot of businesses and we're seeing as you mentioned you know a lot of vacant a lot of dark strip centers retail strip centers and retail of all sorts you know whether there's they're standalone um or in a strip center connected not connected <clears throat> so um there's more of those coming available um is the city open to that well if they're not they're going to be and you know all along as we've been looking at these conversion opportunities in those retail strip centers you know that is the question is can we get it zoned what's it currently zoned for and um does self-storage fall within that because in in some municipalities some cities some towns self-storage falls under general business which is what this you know grocery store may already you know or or vacant retail or industrial building may already be zoned for and then we just have to get a permitted use once we submit plans other times it is commercial but it's not you know self-storage falls in you know, under a different category and that particular city and so then we have to go to zoning for a variance and have them approve that so long as the neighbors approve it and, and the city is okay with it as well and and that is almost always predicated on how long has it been vacant 
um, the city will think, well, we, you know, we'd rather have retail in here because they'll pay more taxes and the valuation is higher and, um, you know, we can get more money out of them. And we'd really like to see, you know, a vibrant retail center. Well, the longer that goes on, then all, you know, uh, perhaps the owner uh, of the building lets it go back to the bank. If it's sitting at the bank, then it's deteriorating. If it deteriorates, then the bank either has to take care of it. If uh, the bank lets it go and then the city takes it over, then the city has to take care of it. You know, and the value goes down, down and down. And now they're ready. You know, they want to dump this thing. They want to unload it. And mm -hmm. so that, it's at that point where, you know, all, by this time, you know, a year later, two years, three years, five years later, you know, all, all the retail folks have come and taken a look at this and, and all the, you know, the other types of businesses are, are aware of this building um, or strip center. And if they haven't bought it, they're not going to. So now, you know, if, if we happen to be the, you know, the first ones or the, the more persistent ones that have come mm -hmm. back to the city and say, okay, guys, it's time. Do you want this thing back on the tax roll? Here's our plans. We'll take it back. You know, we will create a, um, a storage facility out of it. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to look like this. Here's how much gen uh, uh, revenue is going to generate. And by the way, it doesn't have an impact on traffic because it's, you know, low noise, low electricity, low lighting, you know, low everything, very, very little impact. And then all of a sudden the story becomes, you know, uh, it becomes attractive. The project becomes attractive to them. So all that to say, and again, you know, we can do case study by case study because it, it does depend. Um, you know, who's looked at it, you know, how, who owns the building? Um, how long has it been sitting? You know, what's the city's appetite? Is the area, you know, really, Roel, is the, is the area declining so that, you know, we know that there, there's probably not going to be anybody coming back in here if the area is just declining in general. And we looked at a big Walmart um, in Ohio one year that the entire area was declining. I mean, we looked at a Walmart and then as I stood there, I, you know, I looked around did the 360 and there was vacant stores, big boxes, retail. I mean, could I had my pick of the litter. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, at that point, the population was going down and these buildings, you know, were getting uh, lower and lower in values. So we never pulled the trigger on that one. And others, it's just very, if they're, you know, just recently went under, then, you know, they're waiting in, in, and in a decent area it just happened to be this one chain that went bankrupt or what have you, but in a strong, healthy, you know, area, then, you know, it may not work or it may take time or, you know, somebody else, another retail, you know, establishment or some other developer may come in and, you know, chop it up and, and reuse it as something else, repurpose it as something else. So, you know, many ways to look at this. Uh, again, we love conversions uh, because that's, we feel that that is uh, one of the best ways and the fastest ways to create value. I mean, obviously, the quickest way to get into the business, buy an existing facility, you know, improve the operations, raise rent, raise uh, occupancy. And if you can build more units, if there's vacant ground, great. Um, if you have a conversion and it's in a great area with a low supply index, meaning high demand, and, you know, the shell's built. And if the zoning is in place or it doesn't take much to get the zoning in place, then we're six to nine months of converting it and building out the interior doors, turning the lights on and, and we're, we'll begin leasing. So that creates value very quickly versus starting with a piece of uh, ground that is not currently zoned for self-storage and then having to go through that long process and then getting all the bids and going back and forth and back and forth. You're 18 to 24 months before you're in the place where you're renting units up and a long time before it's a positive cash flow. So yeah, we, we love conversions. That is a, a, a great um, strategy in storage right now. And especially since it's, you know, that's a way to get into these infill locations where before the city wouldn't allow any new construction. And it's hard to find four acres somewhere, you know, in an area um, or even two acres to build up, um, you know, that makes sense from a, a cost standpoint. So uh, an excellent strategy. And um, yes, one that we we are definitely pursuing. So does that answer your question? <laughs> or, mm -hmm. or did I create more confusion? No, that's great. The follow up question actually is it, yeah. how realistic would it be as that for somebody, or I guess I'll put it this way. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what would you say would be some prerequisites for someone to get into conversion? <clears throat> like, mm -hmm. I'm assuming and correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, it's more of an intermediate type strategy. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone who's done fix, residential fix and flips, probably not a good entry point, but mm -hmm. depending on on the scale of, of mm -hmm. their project. So what would you say would be sort of like a prerequisite to get into conversions? Yeah. Um, well, always look, you know, I'll, I'll always look and always give it a shot. But um, prerequisite, you know, if you're going to take it down yourself, meaning, you know, using your own uh, cash and getting funding, um, that may be a little bit difficult if you don't have previous self storage experience. And so from that standpoint, you know, you're most likely going to be bringing in a partner, the bank is usually not going to uh, make a loan to you if this is your first rodeo. 
um, that's just a little too risky for them. So if you want to talk about getting into storage in general and taking a step back, you know, if you don't have experience in storage, then buy a storage facility because at the very least, then the bank can look at the historical occupancy and the cash flow, you know, a P&L and, you know, see trending and tax returns to make a, a you know, a, a fairly easy assessment of this project and the likely success of it based upon an appraisal, feasibility study, what have you. Um, and in that case, they would take a chance on you as a first time buyer. Going into a conversion project, I mean, it's no different than development. And, and again, if this is your first time out, you're going to have to bring somebody else in that has experience um, before the, the bank's going to take a look at it. Or, you know, at the very least, uh, if you're a wholesaler, um, you know, you put together the project and you know what it takes to bring this to the table for somebody else. Um, again, you could get a bird dog fee out of this. You may be able to get a small piece of ownership if you're going to do some of the due diligence. Or if you're a contractor, if you're a fixer and flipper, you know, you may be able to get a piece of the business by converting the shell, the building itself, um, the exterior, the roof, HVAC, and then putting this on your resume and then letting the self-storage builders come in and build out the interior units, you know, do the unit mix, uh, the site layout, and they finish it up. And there's two parties on the contracting side, essentially working hand in hand. And you may have a hand in, in that piece uh, or at least some piece of it to build up your um, your resume, get a little money along the way, and perhaps a little bit of equity. So those are the, oh, I guess, three or four ways of, of, of approaching it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Actually, you touched upon one of the alternate topics I was going to bring up, mm -hmm. uh, which is fix and flipping compare, uh, in the self-storage world. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. we are out of time. I know, as always, you're in between, and I really mm -hmm. appreciate you squeezing uh, these little Q&As in to answer some questions from our, mm -hmm. from our vast nation of self-storage investors. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you again for this one, Scott. All right. My pleasure, Roel. And I always uh, welcome the break. So uh, thanks, bud. We'll see you soon. All right. Soon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right. Take care. Thanks again for joining us here at Self Storage Investing. We really, really appreciate it. For more great content like this, make sure to click the subscribe button below this video. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Bigger Pockets. You can also visit us at our main website at selfstorageinvesting.com, where you'll find even more free content, our ebook and registration to our free webinars and education courses, and much, much more. Once again, for more great content like this, please click the subscribe button below. Thank you.